Yo, what is going on guys? Tip here coming at you with another Rocket League video. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys a in-depth aerial left guide. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. Okay, this video is going to be broken up into three parts. There's going to be part zero, part one, and part two. You guys might be wondering, what does part zero mean? And let me explain that. So part zero is going to be something that you guys are going to need to learn before you attempt aerial left. And that is going to be basic aerial car control. Uh, if you don't know how to control your car whenever you're not spinning, odds are you're going to be completely lost whenever you try to control it while it's constantly spinning. So have a basic idea of aerial car control. You need to know that if your hood is facing you, left is left, right is right. And if you're looking at the underside of your car, then your uh, controls are reversed. So that is part zero, have a basic aerial car control understanding. Uh, I will have a video linked in the description and in the top right corner right now of my basic aerial car control guide. So go check that out if you're interested. Uh, so that's gonna be step uh, zero or part zero. Part number one is going to be the two learning techniques that I'm gonna be teaching you guys. And part two will be uh, the best training techniques. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and hop into free play. Okay, so I got part zero out of the way. Now let's go ahead and move on to part one. And that's going to be the two techniques that I'm gonna be teaching you guys to learn. And the first way is going to be, and I would highly recommend combining these two methods, and I'm gonna explain it like that because I think it's the best and fastest way to learn. So, uh, first thing you're gonna do, obviously, is bind arrow left or arrow right. Doesn't matter which one you choose, arrow left is the exact same as arrow right, arrow right is the exact same as arrow left, one is not better than the other, although you are kind of a weirdo if you use arrow right, not gonna lie. But there are a bunch of people and pros that use arrow right, so whatever feels more comfortable to you, use that okay so once you have it bound whenever you're holding it right it's just spinning your car it's not going to change your direction unless you start moving your joystick right and that's where everybody struggles so first thing you guys are going to want to learn is tornado spinning and reverse tornado spinning so a tornado spin looks like this and a reverse tornado spin looks like this and i'm going to explain to you guys why this is so important and to do these real quick, uh, I know some of you may not know, if you're using arrow left to tornado spin, uh, you're going to hold down your arrow left and point your stick to the right. And then to reverse tornado spin, you're gonna point your stick to the left, like that. And then if you're using arrow right to tornado spin, you're gonna point your stick to the left. And to reverse tornado spin, you're gonna point your stick to the right. Okay, now that we know how to do it, Let's see what it does. So notice that whenever we're just doing arrow left, our car isn't changing position, right? Our car is pretty much on an even plane, just like this. But whenever we tornado spin, our car is swiveling on an axis. And I'm gonna explain to you guys why that is so important. Whenever your car is swiveling on an axis, you can use your boost in the direction that your nose is pointing to give yourself momentum, change direction, or slow your car down. So if I want to slow my momentum down while I'm going forward, then I can tornado spin and boost whenever my nose is pointing towards me. And you see how that immediately will take me backwards, right? And it also applies whenever you're going very fast. If you're going up for an aerial and then wanna slow down a bunch, you see how I just slowed down all, my, all of my momentum because I boosted while my nose was facing towards me. And whenever your nose faces towards you, that means so is your boost. And that's gonna use your boost to stop your momentum or gain momentum depending on which way you use it. And the complete opposite is true. If you wanna go really fast, then you can tornado spin and then boost whenever your uh, nose is pointed forward. It's gonna be the exact same thing. Same thing applies for reverse tornado spinning as well. Uh, you know, if you wanna go faster, then do it while your nose isn't facing. But most people just do tornado spins because it is faster than a reverse tornado spin and it looks a lot more natural. Reverse tornado spinning is usually only used whenever you're trying to make adjustments to the left side, which is what we're going to cover now. So once you get an understanding of how to use your boost effectively, uh, we're gonna go into the micro adjustment part and this is gonna be the number two learning technique. So with just technique number one, you should be able to know how to change direction. Just look at where your nose is pointing and then boost whenever you wanna go that way. So right now, I'm just tapping my boost and tornado spinning, so I'm gonna pretty much stay 
at the same pace, but if I want to go to the right, I'll hold down boost whenever my nose is facing, or sorry, to the left. I'll hold down my boost whenever my nose is facing to the left. Same thing on the right side. If I'm tornado spinning, my nose is pointing to the right, it's pointing to the right, right, right. And see, all of that is while I'm holding down my uh, arrow left and my stick to the right, and then I'm just feathering my boost depending on which direction I want to go. So once you are decent at that, then we can start trying to make even more micro adjustments. And that is going to be why you need a basic aerial car control understanding before you learn this. So whenever you're going up for a ball, or if you're just aiming for something on the crossbar, you're going to want to adjust whenever you see the back of your car or whenever you see the underside of your car. So whenever I see the back of my car, right is right and left is left. And then the complete opposite is true whenever I see the underside. Whenever I see the underside, if I turn my stick to the left, it'll go right. If I turn my stick to the right, my car will go left. So once you have a basic understanding of that, we can implement that into air roll left. So if I start off facing this way and want to hit the top right of the blue crossbar, whenever I see my hood here, I'm going to go to the right on my joystick. And whenever I see the underside, I'm going to turn left on my joystick to send my momentum that way. So I'll show you guys what that looks like. I'll be spinning, spinning. I'll go right, left, right, left. And now I'm too far so I can reverse tornado spin to stop all my momentum. And now I'm on the right path so I don't need to adjust my stick at all. So we're kind of adding the two parts here. If you end up going too far one way or too far the other way or end up going too fast or too slow, you can then tornado spin to use your boost effectively and point your nose which way you want to go. So that is part number one. Let's go ahead and move on to part number two, which is going to be the most effective way to train. And the most effective way to train, if you're on PC, uh, Steam in particular, workshop maps are going to be your best friend. Speed Jump Rings 3, amazing map. That's how I learned how to air roll left. Uh, but if you don't have that, then you can do what I was just doing. Aim for something on the map and start off by not facing it. So obviously if I'm aiming for the uh, top right crossbar right here, all I have to do if I'm facing it is jump and then air roll left. And notice how I'm not adjusting anything at all because I'm already on that trajectory, right? So you don't want to be facing what you're going to aim for because then it defeats the whole purpose of learning how to control. So you want to like point your car to the right side and then aim for the top left. And then now I can, you know, use all these adjustments to get to the top left. Uh, and that's going to be a big key in practicing. You don't want to make it easy for yourself because the more times you fail, the more times you're going to know what you did wrong and how to improve. So uh, if you're on Steam, Speed Jump Rings 3, and you can also do this in free play. If you're on console, I would recommend this map, uh, just a basic map and aim for the crossbars, or you can go into free play, go to training, free play, and then you can go over to the pillars map go ahead and load it up and then just practice weaving in and out of these pillars so i will go here i can use ball cam if i need to and then here i'm going to boost because i'm about to hit the wall and then you know you just get the feelings of which way to adjust and my last piece of advice do not expect to see results over time uh, a lot of people will try this and then in 30 minutes they'll say oh dude i can't do it, it it's not going to happen overnight for me, it took me about two months to become really, really comfortable. And the same thing with a bunch of other uh, people that practice this. I've heard that some people it can take six months, some people it can take two weeks, you know? I've never heard of anybody getting it better in less than two weeks. So do not expect to see results immediately. Whenever I first learned it, I put about an hour to two hours every single day for the first week. And then after that, I spent like 30 minutes a day uh, whenever I played and yeah, you just can't expect to see results, especially if you're not willing to put in the time. So hopefully this guide was helpful. Uh, let me know in the comments if it was or if there's any questions that you have about Arrow Left or any more videos that you want to see on this topic. I'm Tip, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.